Hi, you guys. Okay, The Handmaid's Tale, Season 4, Episode 10. Okay, the episode starts off with a flashback of June and the commander back in Gilead at the Jezebel's. June says, you have to show him love because that's what he needs. But ten you like it, but ten you love it, but ten you want it. This is your commander. Make him your everything. Make him believe. Don't run, don't kick or scream. Don't bite it off don't bite okay june is down at the courthouse and mark shows his stupid ass face around there and june says to him look i'd rather for you not to be here today and he tells june look this is going to be brief he explains to june that fred has been offered immunity in exchange for his cooperation and her statement will be heard in the icc hearing so when they get inside the room no one's there but a camera mark apologizes for no judges being there in person to hear june's statement june nonchalantly said judges are busy mark gives june the raw deal he said to june that given her statement is really customary and that fred will more than likely likely be granted immunity in exchange for his cooperation june asks mark is he everything you hoped for mark tells june actually he is all the pieces that we put together for gilead fred actually made him properly fit he put him in the proper place so yes he done showed us that he is very valuable june says hmm weak men make the world go round and mark says I'm on your side, Mrs. Osborne. And June had to tell him, I was a prisoner of Fred's whom he would fuck time to time and you're setting him free. There is no side. All Mark could come back with is, thank you for continuing to participate in this process. Same bullshit basically that Gilead gave Fred with, we'll keep you in our prayers. It's the same bullshit. The sad thing about this is this happens in real life all the time. June gives her statement and as she's walking out the courthouse, she's reminiscing of her times in Gilead and when she was violated or went through trauma, how the color blue, she would fade into the color blue and it would take her somewhere else mentally. June looks up at the sky, at the blue sky and she fades away. And this is not good because she fr she's free and she still feels like she has to suppress her feelings so june may feel violated with the court decision i mean just imagine you go in there you tell them all these things they're acting like they're on your side that they feel your they have compassion for you and then let your abuser walk free you will feel violated june is back at the house and luke asks her how was it and june says shitty but it's over now you know and luke is like yeah you know you're here nicole's here that's a miracle we have to count our blessings and june is like yeah i guess you're right rita and maura is also there so rita asks june was she back is she speaking when june tried to take mark head off the other night that was funny june answered yes and rita said well praise be i got some tea are you hungry and june said rita i'm gonna need for you to stop serving me and sit down Rita said, I know, girl. I'm working on it with my therapist, okay? Maura, Maura gets off the phone and she is livid, okay? She said, Geneva. They're sending this prick to Geneva. He's going to have his trial there and he'll have immunity here. Him and his Viking ass wife are free to do and go wherever they want. In less than a week, they will be gone. And Rita said, well, that's good. Out of sight, out of mind. Then Maura comes up with an idea. She said, you know what? You need to go to Geneva and testify. And Rita said, nope, not a good idea. And June is like, why? They already heard what I had to say. They don't, they don't care. Maura said, no, forget about the SEC. You can do press. And June is like, no, I'm done. You can do it. And, or you can do a Rita and Rita's like, nope, leave me out of that. Maura is still trying to wrap her head around this. She's like, they're not just going to let him be out, right? They can't do that. They have to listen to you. You're June fucking Osborne. June says to Maura, look, girl, I done told them all of the things. They know who he truly is. Maybe what Fred is offering them is way more valuable than what he did to me. Maura is about to go do her thing, but as she as she's leaving, she tells June, we're going to raise the money and you're going to Geneva. 
Okay, Fred is down here with these people playing guess who. They asked him did he know of a Raleigh. And Fred is like, Raleigh? Ryan? Oh, I don't know her. I don't know her. And then they asked about a Dr. Osborne who was then, who last posting was at the Jezebels. And Fred said, well, contrary to what you have been told, I don't frequent that place. Who said that? Lady says to Fred, Mr. Waterford, I understand that this is difficult for you, but let me remind you that you're helping out a lot of people, families who's trying to find out where their loved one is, if they are dead or alive. So then Fred says, well, this Rowley girl, um, I think she's dead. Fred, you done just said that you don't even know this girl. Mark peeps his head in the room and then him and Serena leaves out. So Serena said, you're late. So Mark is like, I didn't know that we had a scheduled appointment. Serena says to Mark, Fred is giving you all the things that you need, correct? Making you look quite good to your bosses, right? Mark said, yes, yes, he is. Can I do for you, Mrs. Waterford? Serena said, starting with that woman right there, she need to be held in contempt in court for the way that she is treating Fred. Mark says, cut the shit. Your husband has confessed to brutal crimes many of which you witnessed serena as then says she will refer to him as commander waterford and mark just looks at her so serena realized that shit ain't gonna fly and she says look fred needs better internet connection because he needs to communicate with me via skype and he has the right to have communication up in here that's his right also homes we're gonna need a big enough home that will accommodate our entire family we're gonna need some security because when the commander returns we're gonna schedule some tours mark said hold tight both are still under custody until the judge ruling is issued arena tells him that judge ruling needs to be expedited okay whatever june needed to make another statement to get it out of her system fine but me and my husband already discussed this and our baby will not be born in this place mark said i'll see what i can do but serena you plan on leaving here with the commander as husband and wife serena said of course mark asked, said can you explain that to me serena and serena said i don't have to and i agree with her on that one mark is a simp that want to eat serena's puss okay our girl june done tried to warn him what he thought this was june is over at emily's and emily asked june how it was court and june told her everything that happened emily said wow they wouldn't stand for that in gilead they both were talking about how gilead likes their revenge with a personal touch such as nooses and things june says my mother always said if you really want to know what they believed in just know they brought a lot of the more of the old testament than the new and emily said yeah because the the stories were way more interesting such as righteous will rejoice in benches and wash their feet in the blood of the wicked the good stuff you know and they both laughed and then june said i tried to forget about him emily and i just can't want to focus on my family i want to focus on hannah nicole and luke a good mother will be able to let go and june is breaking down oh junie that doesn't make you a bad mother you just want your revenge june is going to go have a visit with fred and as she's walking up the hall she has she's having flashbacks of gilead and how she will be subservient to fred when june enters fred's cell he's like oh hey june i can i call you june and june's like that well that always been my name the fuck fred says so what brings you here june said well i heard you were going to geneva and i thought that this would be my last opportunity and fred said what to wish a, a, me well because we all know that's not our june and out of respect i will hold no ill will towards you for what you have said in court so june says calmly fred i think you know what really happened and fred said yeah i remember and i know that you had to put on for the for the judges and your husband there were discomforts at my home for the both of us but more so for you than me and for that i do have deep regrets you see i didn't really fully understand your situation until they try to take my child away from me that's unimaginable you must have felt terrible longing for your daughter and for that i'm sorry 
June is just emotional now. She's like, I never thought that I would hear you say this. And I'm wondering if June is genuinely appreciating his apology or is she pretending? June said, Woo, I need a drink. And Fred is like, Woo, me too, girl. But at this point, I'm thinking, okay, June doesn't poison him. But when she also took a sip of the drink, I'm like, okay, no, it can't be that. But the way she was mugging him, like, just die, motherfucker. I was thinking she poisoned him. At this point, Fred thinks that June and him had some type of connection back in Gilead. He wouldn't call it love, but it was something. June said, yeah there was fred said i miss all fred sometimes and june said for real i miss her too i miss her strength fred said she was special and in a way she was inspiring june and fred have a toast to alfred june is planning something I'm not sure right now but she's planning something and fred is a sociopath he is not sorry for his actions he's sorry that he got caught which makes me wonder if june really accept his apology because for me my abuser can never apologize for to me you're only apologizing because you got caught maybe a few years down the line when you really have set with what you have done to me and you may really take god in your heart and ask for forgiveness maybe then so but not right now fred is not sorry luke is driving home with june and he's explaining to her that the government had gave them extra security because of fred supporters they're kind of hanging out at out the house and everything and so june is like well they can keep fred the redeemer luke says i get that i get that he says to june hey what about a beer let's go get a beer and june is like nah i just want to go home and so he's like home like back in boston home we can do this we can do that he might as well been charlie brown mother womp 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 okay because june had cut him off and she says I want Fred on that wall. Excuse me, ma'am. How did we get here? Luke said, June, they done made that sit decision. So you're just going to have to let it go. And June is like, mm-hmm. I'm going to put him on that fucking wall. June pops up at Mr. Toello's apartment. And child, she's sitting out there and he back home from a jog. And she said, Fred is not going to get away with this. I'm going to need a ride and you might want to change your clothes. Mark simp ass is livid. Okay. He's like, you have my email. You have my telephone number to come at my apartment is unacceptable. And June is just sitting there like, are you finished or are you done? Mark apologizes for his tone. And June said, you know what? You don't have to. Gilead can sometimes bring, make you out into a cunt, but I'm going to need Fred to get what he deserves. And Mark is like, I understand that but I just, I just don't know what I can do for you June said look just give me a ride and just listen some way somehow June had went down to the embassy and she got a way to contact Lawrence so June Mark and Lawrence are now meeting up June says so you want to make a deal for Fred Commander Lawrence said he's not a used car he's my fellow countryman lost and far from home Mr. Toella we just want to get Fred home and Mark is like I'm sure you would now that he's down to the courthouse snitching y'all scared Commander Lawrence said, no, nah, he down there in a crisis. Y'all shouldn't rely on his words. June said, uh-uh, you said that he been talking. You said that he been helpful. Don't try to backpedal and pussy pop now. You have said he is valuable. Mark said, yes, yes, I said that. So Lawrence tried to creep in with, well, we'll be willing to make some monetary changes over here. And Mark is like, what is this? Is this a joke? We're past that. And June said, Lawrence, don't be a dick. And Lauren's like, well, <laughs> shit, I had to try it. He passes Mark a pile of folders. He said, 22 women. They were a part of the resistance, right? Mark said, oh my goodness. Like, I thought they were dead. Most of them, at least. And June said, and you have the chance now to save him. And Lauren's like, hold up, my man. But you bring my brother back. June said, I know you think 
everything that Fred is giving you is helping you save lives and all. But these 22 women are a part of the lives that you are trying to save. And you're not going to sit up here and tell me that Fred's word is more valuable than these 22 women lives. June got him on this one. At first, June's story was just one of the stories. Now, the government cannot turn their back on 22 women who was providing them with intel and just say, fuck them, that wouldn't be right. Their humanitarian efforts would be questionable. Mark said, all right, I'll take this to my boss. I bet you, you will. Mark, go on to the car. Lauren says to June, I see you haven't lost your touch because he peeped how June gets her way even here in Canada. And he says to June, June, it will never be enough. If they give Fred back to us, what ha whatever happens to him after that, it will not be enough for you. Throughout the episode, we've been seeing how June had flashbacks of the many faces she put on in Gilead pretending suppressing her feelings when she has been violated and being subservient we seen how this episode in canada how she's been putting on them faces earlier in the episode she's been t pretending that she accept that okay Fred is going to get this deal. Everything is going to be fine. I done came to terms with it. Even though after everything she has said and all the information that she put out there about Fred and the disgusting things she have done and the court still offer Fred immunity, June had to suppress her feelings about that. And we seen her pay a visit to Fred and she was being subservient. Maybe to get an apology? I don't know. But will this be enough for June when Fred make it back over to Gilead? Gilead will not put up with the fact that Fred been over there ratting. Back at the house, the gang is there and that's Maura, June, and Luke. Rita and Emily. And they're discussing the newest plans for Fred. Luke said, well, that's good. He'll go back to Gilead and he will go to jail in Gilead. Emily said, or the colonies. And he won't be free, but he'll still be alive. And Rita said, well, it'll be proper in some sort of justice. Maura said, I don't care what happens to him. I just want him gone. I've been spending too much of my life thinking about him. It's funny how trauma can be triggered in different ways, like one being justice. Moral at first was kumbaya, be peaceful. And now that she know that uh, her abuser can be set free, that's a trigger for her. Rita seemed triggered because she gets back up and start doing dishes with Luke. And Emily asks June, well, what do you want? And June says, I want him to be afraid because I was afraid for so long. And Emily asks her, how afraid? And I think Emily is encouraging this because of the feeling that she felt when she found out that her abuser was dead. Who goes on to say, like when I was afraid when I got caught in the woods with Hannah. Emily like, mm-hmm, girl, come with it, say more. And Luke is just a peeping over his shoulder listening like this bitch here. I done told her ass to let this go. June said, I want him scared to death. Down at the jailhouse luxury suites, Fred is off to his trip to Geneva. And when he returns, he'll be a free man. Serena's like, wow, Fred, it's really a miracle what you have done. What, snitched? Fred said, I was guided by his hand and my love for the two of you. These two are some sociopaths for real. Serena set up and organized all his paperwork for court and everything. He said, Dag, like on the, the plane, I guess I won't be able to watch any movies. And this is what I'm talking about. They get out of G Gilead and they don't even still live up to Gilead's customs. He tells Serena, too bad you can't come with me. And Serena said, well, for now, we're going to have to divide and conquer, but I'll be right here when you get back. And he tells Serena, you know what? How about we try that Zoom thing? I would like to see you. Serena says, sure, Fred. Praise be. And Fred is off to his flight to Geneva. So he thought. Child, Mark was hot on them heels, okay? And Fred said, hey, Mark, what you doing here? You came to say goodbye? Mark said, you will not be going to Geneva today. The ICC has ruled you unfit for leniency. They have turned your dispensation over to 
to the American government, which makes you now in my custody. Fred is like, I know you fucking lied. They are placing handcuffs on him and they are putting him in the back of the wagon, okay? And Fred is like, I am a man. I have rights. That's your problem, Fred. Humans have rights. Back at the house, we see June leaving out her house. And she has on her Gilead red coat. And I told y'all, this coat represents her ties to Gilead. And the way she's staring at the window and she's looking at Maura and Luke and baby Nicole. She's looking at them like this is going to be the last time that she's going to see them. So she's getting that picture perfect image in her mind. So maybe Fred getting turned over to Gilead isn't enough for June. Okay, so Mark is dragging Fred out of the wagon. And Fred is like, where are you taking me to a back road to be executed? And Mark said, no, I'm sending you home. So on the way to the Gilead line, Fred sees all the 22 women that was coming to the Canada side. And Fred is like, oh my goodness, a prisoner exchange. And this is what he asked for in the beginning from Gilead. Mark says to Fred that the Gilead government had made a guarantee that he will be tried under the formal Gilead justice system. You helped write those laws, didn't you? These women here, they did it. It worked for them. So let's see if it'll work for you. And here come Fred with his holy roly talk. He's like, you're going to have to face God for the decisions you made. He knows what's in your heart. He knows your desire and what you covet. Mm-hmm. Serena. Fred is right about that. Mark says to Fred, boy, bye. And they haul him over down to Gilead's side where he meets Commander Lawrence. Fred said, I just want you to know everything I did, I did for my family. And for that, I won't apologize. And Lawrence is like, okay. And Nick pulls up. Fred is like, oh, hey, Nick. Nick said, hey, the eyes will take the prisoner into custody. Fred is all kind of confused. He's like, Nick, son, what are you doing? Lawrence said, if I eject, would it make a difference? And Nick said, I'm sorry. At the border, the eyes maintain technical control. Lauren said, oh, well, go in grace, Fred. Fred is just a Nick, son, where are we going? Nick, son, what are you doing? They gave Fred a good old-fashioned Gilead strap down. Fred is chained by the neck, hands, and feet. They stop at some woods and they drag him out the car and Fred is just keep going. Nick, son, what are we doing? Are we even in Gilead anymore? This is wrong. What jurisdiction do you have to hold me? I have questions that deserve answers. And Nick just got tired and he hit him with that damn gun. Fred said, just tell me where we're at. Nick said, you're in no man's land. And when June emerged from them trees, you could have brought me for 99 cents. I was expecting that something was going to happen to Commander Fred, but I did not see June coming for him. Fred said, my God. And Nick said, do not be deceived. God is not to be mocked. For what a man soweth, shall he reap. Nick tells him, you did this to yourself. Fred said, help me, help me, please. June come on down and she give Nick a good old nasty kiss, okay? Fred is like, what the fuck is this? This is sick. Is it sick because you, you thought that you and June had something, Fred? His ass got some nerve. I think that's why June kissed Nick like that. It's the shoulder commander. You thought you had me, but you didn't. The joke was on you. June uncuffs Fred and Fred is like, oh my goodness, you are a good and kind woman, a mother. June faces him in one hand. She has a gun and the other she has a whistle and she tells him to choose. Again, the joke is on Fred. So Fred is like, well, I know you can't shoot me. So June said, well, okay. She blows the whistle to make the bird call and all her comrades come running out, charging towards Fred. Fred cannot believe it. He said, a oh, Fred, I am a father. And you notice he's calling a Fred because that's who he missed. That's who he connect with. That's who he thought that he can manipulate. June said, run. And baby, he took off like lightning, okay? 
Emily is in the crowd with them. They are on Fred's ass. And as they're running, we see the same flashback as in the beginning of the episode in June, when June is at the Jezebels with Fred. And she says, show him love because that's what he needs. Pretend you like it, pretend you love it, pretend you want it. This is your commander. Make him your everything. Don't run, kick or scream. Now, by this time, Fred done trip and fell. So he is down bad, okay? June goes over and she is giving him the business, okay? And then Emily jumps in and then everyone else. And they are fucking him up. As they should all night long. We hear June and her flashbacks saying don't bite and she bites the shit out of fred and i guess that's to symbolize the animal that he brought out in her but i thought that was a little bit too much like ew i can't stand biting but i'm not here to tell a person how to serve up their revenge either and we exit the scene with a good old-fashioned gilly ass circle a hands made circle and how they used to serve up the punishment of death when strange ass gilly justice system would find someone guilty of saying a handmade over there which all of them are S A handmaids over there. We've seen on several occasions that the handmaids will all get together and kill the person. So that's what this scene was giving us. And I was here for it, okay? And the music selection. The sun has came up and we see all June and all the her comrades come from out of the woods. And it looked like they took an underground way over to Gilead. And now they're going back to Canada back in there emerging from out the woods going back in their car and they're going back home and they are bloody and bruised serena is in her cell on her laptop waiting for her boo to zoom in fred will not be joining serena on zoom today fred is dead as fuck meanwhile it's mail alert mail alert the guard gets to serena mail and he's like sender messenger so he opens the envelope and he shakes it and a ring pops out. So he's like, uh-uh, that's not all that's in here. He shakes it again and a fucking finger comes out. Well, I'll be a finger for a finger. I like ye. June comes home and baby Nicole is just a cooing in her crib. June goes straight over to Nicole, bloody and all. June gives no fucks about germs and sanitation. I'll give her a pass. She's in manic mode. June is hugging and kissing on baby Nicole. And Luke walks in. And when Luke really takes a look at her and realizes that June has done some shit, he it's like someone stabbed him in the heart. He just falls to the floor. Luke is thinking they were making progress and they done got knocked back 50 steps. June says to him, just give me five minutes with her and then I'll go. I'm wondering if June going to have to go on the run. I don't think so because it's no longer Canada business. And who from over Gilead will really testify that June was there? So I'm also thinking she's telling Luke, like, look, I know that you can't deal with me. And I know that I'm I'm different than what I was pre-Gilead. And moving on and living as a happy family just isn't in my cause right now. Re revenge is in June's heart. This will be interesting for season five. And the episode ends with Fred's body hanging from the wall and his head is missing. And the message reads in Latin. I'm not even going to try to that. I fucks Latin up. Okay. I did in the sixth grade. I hated it then and I hate it now. But the the translation is don't let the bastards grind you down and remember this was the message that was carved inside the closet from the previous handmaid before june was a fret man that revenge was awesome i am satisfied and i'm looking forward to season five i hope that June doesn't have to go on the run. I hope they don't go in that direction. I would like season five to be twisted in a murderous and Gilead season. Hope Serena gets her reality check. 
And I hope that Janine and Esther is over there causing havoc. I see that Lawrence and Nick ultimately came through for June, but I'm still side eyeing them. We'll see in season five. I cannot wait to see Serena face when they take that baby from her. Mm -mm -mm. I thank you guys for tuning in this for this season review, and I hope to see you guys on the next season. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Tune into some of my other reviews, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.